Hello, welcome to Tech Web Dots. Today, I am going to discuss a very small topic, which is sub orchestrator. In the previous video, we have already discussed what is orchestrator, and I have already covered all the green section that you can see here. Okay, and the highlighted one is sub orchestrator. In the upcoming video, what is Azure Lit Manager, or you can Azure Resource Manager template. Okay, so let's move ahead without wasting time. And as usual, these all are the prerequisites and my suggestion that I strongly recommend you if you are working or developing locally, then you need Azure Emulator, Azure Storage Explorer, and Azure Development Workload with your visual work on Azure Portal, and then Azure Subscription is required. And I strongly suggest you to watch the previous video and the playlist link is given in the description of this video. So you can check the order and go accordingly. Okay. Now, you must be thinking what is sub orchestrator, where it is used, and what are the benefits. So, all these things that I'm going to discuss today. So orchestrator functions can call other orchestrator functions. Okay, for example, you can build a large orchestration out of a library of small orchestrator functions, or you can run multiple instances of an orchestrator in parallel. Let's have a look in this screen. Okay, we have starter orchestration client then we have orchestrator sub orchestrator and the activities let's go through by the definition so an orchestrator function can call another orchestrator function using call sub orchestrator bi okay the function behave just like activity functions from the caller perspective they can return a value or throw an exception and can be awaited by an parent orchestration function okay what do we mean by is the same things that we that we can do by calling the activities directly from orchestrator and this gives the same behavior then why we are using sub orchestrator the reason is if there are a lot of activities which are similar from the logical point of view they can be grouped with sub orchestrator this is a very important point and using sub orchestrator is optional as i said you can directly call all these activities from the sub orchestrator but it is just a way to logically group the activities but you can call all of them directly from orchestrator if you want okay so when you really logically group the activities in that case you can consider sub orchestrator is a good option now what are the fits associated with it one we have already discussed and what is its actual flow so one of the benefit of using sub orchestrator is that there is a built-in retry mechanism from sub orchestrators just uh, just as you can think of activities so it makes more sense to actually retry several activities not only one okay then sub orchestrator might be a good candidate to solve that so how the execution goes okay when we talk about this start a durable orchestration client it is actually a durable client client which receive i durable orchestration client and when we talk about orchestrator what it receives it re receives durable orchestration context okay and but it is actually orchestration ticker and when we talk about sub orchestrator it also receives i durable orchestration context okay which starts a sub orchestrator which usually takes this parameter okay and then at the end sub orchestrator then call a specific activities which is as a parameter i durable activity context so i hope it is clear now it's time to see i mean how it is different so you can see this is one simple orchestration trigger okay so activities can also be directly called by root orchestrator as i said earlier if it make no sense to group them under any of the sub orchestrator so let's have a look at this example what we are doing here so you can see we have here we are calling create installation package this is activity we are calling another activity send package url to device and then at the end we are waiting for the external event means when we will receive the acknowledgement from the device okay yes it is completed okay so these are the two activities that we are calling from this orchestrator okay so this example simply illustrate the internet of things or you can say the iot scenario where these are where there are multiple devices that needs to be provision and the funny present the provisioning of workflows that needs to be executed for each device now this is without uh, sub orchestration now let's think about the scenario sub orchestrate so how it will look like we create a one 
parent orchestrator which will be like uh, provision new devices then we can call a activity from where we can get all that if we want to deploy the software package and then we can call the sub orchestrator which is device provisioning orchestrator okay and at the end we are using task dot when all task dot when all it will execute all the task in a parallel fashion okay so let's go by words this orchestrator function can be used as is for one of device provisioning or it can be part of a larger orchestration the parent orchestrator function can schedule instances of device provisioning orchestration using the call sub orchestrator api i hope you like this video if you have any question any comment any suggestion you can leave into the comment box and i will wait for your feedback which is very important so i will see you in the next video till then bye bye